Remember when entry level meant a foot in the door? A place to grow, to learn on the job, even when you didn't have experience. Well, in 2025, that door might be bolted shut. We're hearing reports that entry level job hiring has decreased massively, and it's probably not a surprise. One survey has found that over 94% of tech hiring managers expect candidates, even for entry level roles, to have prior related work experience. And since the pandemic, we've seen stats that have said that entry level jobs have dropped by over 50%. So what's going on here? Why are junior candidates getting filtered out before they can even graduate from college. Today, we're going to investigate what's actually going on and unpack the actual three key details that I think are actually influencing what's going to be happening to entry level jobs to come. So to understand how we got here, let's rewind again back to the 2011 good old heyday period. From basically 2011 to 2020, the demand for engineers and data scientists was really high as startups were in hyper growth phase. In general, teams were expanding pretty rapidly. Mobile was on the rise, Uber, Airbnb, all these startups were doing really well. And that happened for over a decade. Entry level hires back then could expect pretty robust mentorship when you had junior, mid-level, and senior leads at different companies with multiple layers of management as well guiding them. And the companies were willing to hire and create this robust pipeline because talent was actually scarce. There weren't that many software engineers that could go in and actually do this work. So as I mentioned in my previous video, we saw that with boot camps springing up because they were actually trying to supply that demand. And as we've noticed, from before, a lot of the masters and bachelor's degrees in computer science and data science started spraying up as well. But after the great kind of tech layoffs of 2023, as interest rates basically climbed to the highest that we've ever seen them before, we saw this great flattening of tech. Meta had the year of efficiency where previously there'd be these teams with basically one manager with two people underneath them. And then they basically gutted all the managers or told them uh, specifically that they had to become actual ICs again or individual contributors. As a result, this created a lot more leaner, flatter organizations to coach new hires. And in one analysis of the small to mid-sized firms, layoffs of managers aged 35 to 44 skyrocketed over 400% between 2022 and 2024. And for the managers that weren't cut, they suddenly saw them overseeing like twice the amount of people that they had before. At the same time, we also saw remote work opportunities which had exploded during the pandemic also kind of pulled back. So we saw around like 46% less remote work opportunities opportunities since 2022, which ironically would be pretty good for entry level talent. A lot of companies don't really want to hire entry level talent if they have to mentor them remotely, which is never a good experience. You don't really know what like a junior employee is doing when they show up to the job. And so this should actually be a boon for seeing more entry level talent coming in into the future, or so you would think. But today's entry level roles are reflecting a new reality. They often read more like junior, but it says something like junior already experienced. A typical listing might say zero to three years of experience, but then tack on responsibilities like own and deliver end to end data engineering projects. And just to see how far the goalposts have moved, we analyzed on firsthand thousands of job postings with explicit titles like entry level, junior, new grad, and the like to actually see what are they actually posting in these job descriptions. So here's a couple of interesting stats. Out of all the entry level roles that we analyze, only 11% of them actually specify a specific years of experience level. And when they do spell it out, it's actually quite eye-opening. Less than 3% of those job openings actually say zero years of experience. 20% of them ask for exactly one year, 23% wanted two years, and another 23% wanted three years. Almost 50% of the job postings said two to three years of experience was a requirement for an entry-level job. And last but not least, the entry-level jobs that said that you needed four years of experience comprised of around 30% of these postings. Putting that together, what that reads to me is that if you're looking for an entry-level Level job, it's not really entry level anymore. Sure, you could argue that the 89% of job postings might be totally fine with a person with zero years of experience, but we're extrapolating from the existing data that we actually have here. And it sounds a little bit more like entry level is starting to read like false advertising, where the expectations are anything but actually beginner for entry level roles. And that's not just us saying this. An Indeed career advice report, which highlighted what bosses want from entry level workers, is actually changing. Specifically, they want entry level employees to have years of experience and at times sophisticated artificial intelligence skills. So, I mean, it's probably not a surprise that people actually want ChatGPT type AI skills, especially from a younger generation. And the rise of easy AI tools means today's junior employees are expected to actually leverage them. So if you're applying for an entry level job, don't be surprised for recruiters basically asking how you integrate AI into your existing workflows and how familiar you are with these different kinds of LLMs. And if you're interested in learning a little bit more, I released Outskill, an AI program for business analytics and data science 
science graduates, as well as anyone who's trying to transition into AI engineering. I'm not gonna do a full plug here, but check it out. Okay, so the natural question is, from the data that we've seen, is entry level just fake now? Is it actually just misnomer for some sort of positions that don't actually exist? I remember when I was in college, I was still applying to entry level type jobs or basically anything that said under three years of experience because I figured that my internships gave me some form of experience for me to actually be worthy to apply to those jobs. But here's the interesting thing. We actually dive into the data to look at what entry level looks like for different kinds of tech roles. And two of them actually jump off the screen. So some Software engineers in general own 34% of all the entry level jobs, as well as data analysts themselves grab another 32%. But with the rest of the pile, it's looking a little thinner. The grab bag of other kind of analysts and associate labels think business analysts, product analysts takes around 15%, and data scientists themselves take under 12%. Product management is so low here, it's probably under 5%, whereas data engineering and AI specifically also make up the final three or 4%, because they're not really expecting an entry level role for an AI researcher. So in general, the first rung on the ladder is gonna be extremely coding or analytics heavy, right? And that kind of makes sense. In general, like there's a lot of software engineering jobs, so it makes sense that there's gonna be more software engineering entry level roles, but also because these roles are also the ones where you're actually doing stuff like you're debugging code, you're doing all the work, right, for all the other higher level engineers that don't want to do that kind of work. And if you're a data analyst, then you're probably more of like a SQL monkey just crunching out SQL right now because it's worth doing that because data scientists don't want to do that work as well. But someone does need to do it. I can dive into all this data all I want. At the end of the day, we still won't actually be able to see if companies are actually accepting these positions or how many people they're actually interviewing. I think that's kind of the key step that we don't know. Are they putting out these positions and still actually accepting accepting interns, college level students, people with zero years of experience are transitioning? Or are they just intaking a lot more senior candidates that maybe do have like two to four years of real experience? And to figure this out, I really had to just go in and talk to a lot of the people on interview query that basically had gotten jobs before in the past four to five years and were now managers at these companies to kind of see what they were saying. So in one of the coaching sessions that we talked to with a Microsoft and Shopify data professional on interview query, he explained how candidates coming from consulting or business analyst backgrounds might qualify for a data analyst role, even without formal experience, but would likely need to start at an entry level role for data science. Since employers often expect a little bit more experience on the machine learning experimentation side that consulting doesn't really provide. We also talked to another former engineering manager who shared a telling story about his team's recent hiring experience. When they posted like an entry level software engineering position, but they did end up hiring an actual entry level candidate that hadn't had any real work experience before just internship experience because that was specifically what they were gearing to do. That role was specific for someone that was a new grad and they really wanted to abide by that. But at the same time, I talked to multiple startup CEOs that are raising their Series A or Series B and specifically, they're not looking for entry-level talent at all. If they are, they're looking for really cracked engineers. And so they'll go and they'll have these hackathons and tournaments and competitions, but they're really looking for the top 0.01% for entry-level. Otherwise, it really has to be an experienced engineer to really get off the ground running. And so the one thing that I am learning is that a lot of these AI startups are willing to hire a lot of entry-level talent, but they're also demanding these crazy 80-hour work weeks, 996 hours, and it's because of the fact that only entry-level talent is willing to put in those hours, which is why they're available for them. A lot of the time that's because entry-level talent can make up for the kind of lack of experience by working these crazy work hours to really accelerate their own development and be productive. But there's a big difference between these startups trying to hire these entry-level cracked out engineers versus bigger tech companies that comprise probably 99% of the actual hiring pool for entry-level talent that are probably not hiring as many entry-level talent anymore. So what does this actually all mean? Entry-level really means to me that you really have to come in with social proof readiness. And that can be having prior internship experience, that could be having relevant experience from transitioning from another field. But at the end of the day, all employers want some proof of prior work that you've done on the job. We've learned that the great flattening trimmed layers of middle management, squeezing mentorship bandwidth, and even entry-level job ads now mention AI, ML, or one to three years of experience. But showing how you can work independently, leveraging modern tools, and learning on your own is still within reach. So at the end of the day, you really have to be strategic and flexible here. Are we seeing the end of entry-level roles due to AI? I don't think so just yet. The reason why we're seeing so many people complain about the worst job market in history is not because of the
the lack of jobs, it is because of the crazy amount of people that have gone into STEM. But here's the hard part. Even if you understand how the hiring market has shifted and you understand what roles you might have to be now targeting, how to tailor your actual experience, actually navigating it all can feel pretty overwhelming, which is why I built Interview Query, which is a data science, ML, and data engineering prep platform. Our job is to help aspiring data professionals land jobs in a world where the rules keep changing with role-specific preparation, real interview questions from companies like Google, Meta, and Netflix. And with a library of over 9,000 company profiles and thousands of actual questions, it's built to get you impact ready the way today's hiring managers expect. We also launched a few new AI powered actually features. You can practice AI interviews on demand now. We just launched a new IQ tutor to kind of help you work through the solution as you're working on problems. We built a take home assignment analyzer so you can figure out how good you are at take home assignments before actually submitting them. And if you're looking for your next interview, and if it sounds helpful, check the links at the top of the description below. Lastly, if you found this video useful, please drop a like, comment, subscribe. Uh, it really helps me with producing better and better content. I'm not in my usual filming location right now. I'm in actually in Europe for the summer. So thank you for watching all the same and I'll see you guys next time.